papers. Let everybody run amok there? I'm sure they didn't. Washington, D.C. didn't need a corporation to run it. Washington, D.C. already had a government, the federal, which was a trust, and now they have a corporation. Reinvented in 1878, the Congress forms a municipal corporation, USA Incorporated, to have authority over Washington, D.C., the 10 square miles where the federal government is based. There are now two governments acting simultaneously, the lawfully elected government that the people have failed to receive notice that it does not exist anymore, and the corporation with the same employees, congressmen and senators. The purpose of this corporation was to carry out the business needs of the government under the martial law aftermath of the Civil War. It trademarked the names, quote, United States government, quote, United States, quote, U.S., quote, USA, quote, USA without the periods, and America. The corporation, all capital letters, has no jurisdiction over a flesh and blood man woman because fictitious entities cannot enforce their will on anything. I mean, a piece of paper sitting on the table can't tell you what to do. Fictions have no eyes to see nor brains to think, so how can they act? It is the agent of the corporation who acts and what gives them authority to act. A corporation only exists at the pleasure of its creator. When you apply for a corporate license, it is the state that you apply to. The state is the creator and has jurisdiction over its creation. The people created the constitutions which created the states. So how is it that Congress could create a corporation that has jurisdiction over people? They couldn't. You as a sovereign have to give jurisdiction or control to them and that happens every time you sign your name to a contract without qualifying your signature with the words, quote, without prejudice, or, quote, all rights reserved, or, quote, under duress. In Lincoln's reign, he declared a state of war and emergency. War powers are instituted, the emergency war powers have gone on indefinitely, and we are still under them today. Every court in the land is here under admiralty law, the law of the sea during war and under the direction of the supreme commander of the military, the president. Under admiralty law, you are guilty until proven innocent. It is only supposed to apply to the sea. There is a gold-fringed flag flying in every courtroom signifying the military jurisdiction. The Lieber instructions extended the laws of war and international law beyond the boundaries of Washington, D.C., and for the first time it brought foreign law onto American soil, unconstitutional law. Lincoln had no authority to issue an executive order. He commissioned a special code to govern his acts under martial law. The United States, the corporation, became the conqueror, and all the states in the Union were then reformed as franchisees of the federal corporation. So here we have April 24th, the Lieber Code, Section 1, military, Martial Law, Military Jurisdiction, Military Necessity, Retaliation, Article 1. This was commissioned by Abraham Lincoln. A place, district, or country occupied by an enemy stands in consequence of the occupation under the martial law of the invading or occupying army, whether any proclamation declaring martial law or any public warning to the inhabitants has been issued or not. Martial law is the immediate and direct effect and consequence of occupation or conquest. The presence of a hostile army proclaims its martial law. Now, I'm not, uh, I'm not too familiar with this, but uh, I would imagine there isn't a country in the world that would consider having its own troops occupy its own country to do a regime, a regime change. And yet, here we have Lincoln ordering Mr. Lieber to come up with a code that justifies just that thing. Would your local police, sheriff, or friendly state trooper qualify as a standing army? And to say that the, the policeman is a standing army representing the corporate government and thus you're under martial law is really a stretch considering that they claim that they are your public servants representing you. 
In 1907, the banks caused a panic and the people were disgusted with the bankers and Wall Street. They, they swallow up the money supply so it gets to be very tight and things go bad, just as they're doing today. The elite bankers meet on Jekyll Island to create a new central bank and in 1913 brought forth the Federal Reserve. The Federal Reserve is heralded as the answer to greedy bankers and their Wall Street cronies. The people are duped. It is voted in on December 25th while all the congressmen are at home for the holidays and this country is taken over without a shot fired. The Fed is never audited and no disclosure of who the true owners are even though every corporation is required to list its ownership. The primary owners of the Federal Reserve are, one, the Rothschilds of London and Berlin, two, the Lazard Brothers of Paris, three, Israel Moses Safe of Italy, four, Kuhn Loeb and Company of Germany and New York, five, Warburg and Company of Hamburg, Germany, of whom Paul Warburg was one of the creators of the legislation that created the Federal Reserve, six, Lehman Brothers of New York, seven, Goldman Sachs of New York, and eight, Rockefeller Brothers of New York. As we see, it is mostly owned by foreign bankers. It has no reserves, and it is not federal in anything but name, much like Federal Express. They are given the encouragement to print money from thin air without being called a counterfeiter. Yet those that print counterfeit money are creating paper bills that are accepted as having value when they are exchanged and have no differences to those using Federal Reserve notes. Initially, to show it is sound, the Federal Reserve notes state upon it, it can be redeemed in gold at any bank. And here is an example. It states you can payable to the bearer on demand in gold coin. The Fed is completely unlawful as the Constitution states at Article 1, Section 8, under powers granted to Congress, quote, to coin money and regulate the value thereof. If only Congress can do that, how can they give that authority to a private corporation? Congress alone is authorized to declare war. So they could, could they lawfully give that authority to, say, Halliburton? Once again, in Article 1, Section 10, the states cannot, quote, make anything but gold or silver coin a tender in payment of debts. These constitutional requirements have never been amended or repealed, don't forget. The Federal Reserve is a private bank, issues a private form of money, and circulates it as money. Yet the government does not arrest them for doing it. Why? In 1933, the Federal Reserve, who cannot create money and doesn't, it creates a private currency, unless it is requested in the form of a loan, whether from an individual or from the federal government, has created enough money from thin air and loaned it to the government that the federal government went bankrupt to the Fed. The Fed now becomes the new owner of the government. Roosevelt issues a presidential order that only applies to those under the corporation operating <clears throat> as USA Incorporated has jurisdiction over. And who does the government have jurisdiction over? Federal employees and those living in Washington, D.C., Puerto Rico, Guam, the Virgin Islands, and American Samoa. Those are the only people that the government, that the Congress has the right to pass laws for today. But the media, this is back in 1933, the media fools the population into thinking it applies to everyone. The order demands everyone turn in their gold, and Congress passes legislation, H.J.R. 192, that makes it illegal to demand gold in payment. On June 5, 1933, H.J.R. 192 was passed, stating, quote, Every obligation heretofore or hereafter incurred, whether or not any such provision is contained therein or made with respect thereto, shall be discharged upon payment dollar for dollar in any coin or currency which at the time of payment is legal tender for public and private debts." Quote. Gold could no longer be required in any contract for payment of debt. FDR demanded everyone turn in their gold through an executive order. 